Let it be two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. It does not matter what you drive. Clearly, you can see on the channel that uh, I have a thing for rapid red cars here. This is your All-Terrain Nation. I'm your host, David Boyd. And today, we're going to talk about the all-new 2024 Ford Mustang. Now, this is the GT, so you're getting the big Coyote V8, the next-generation Coyote with the dual throttle bodies. Makes it sound really, really cool. You're getting all the big Brembo brakes. You're getting a lot of fun with this car. And I'm going to say it right now. Hey, super guy. Hey, Nissan Z guy this is better for the money and i've been a nissan fanboy for a long time you can't prove it right now but i've been a nissan fanboy and i test drove the nissan a couple months ago and we've done time in the supra and out of all three this would be my pick right now does that mean this is a perfect car by no means is this a perfect car and we will go through this and over the next couple months we're going to point out the good and the bad of this vehicle and that's because we're going to live with this vehicle we buy these things to show you what the vehicle is like over the coming months. Is there places that just wear easily? Is there flaws? We've already had a, one error code on this thing and we just came back from Michigan. That's right. Our friends over at Brighton Ford in Michigan, they sold us this car and we were very happy. We did the order process and it took a, took a little longer than we expected because Ford was not ready to release the cars just yet. But this one here was built June 26th is when this one was built. And we just now, today is uh, August 26th, I believe. We picked it up yesterday. So that's how fast we got this thing. And we did over 600 miles in this car. That's right. This is probably the highest mileage Ford Mustang out there right now. So be as it may, it will not stay that way, I guarantee you, because I have a lot of cars we get to drive over the time. But if you're new to the channel, we love all things automotive. We do. We love big trucks. We love SUVs. We love to go off-roading, and we might try to track this thing. So that might be kind of fun. And uh, Kelly, if you can hear me, don't ask what we're gonna, the tires are going to cost in this because they're expensive. So let's go around this thing real quick, and I want to point out some things about it. You've probably seen reviews, but once again, this isn't where I just show up on a press day, run around it. I'm going to live with this car, and so are you. So let's get into this right now. you got to pop the hood on this thing. What kind of, you, you want to see a car like this. You want to see the engine of it because that's, that's the pizzazz of this car. That's why you're buying this car is because it's got that big V8 in this thing. And this kitty will get up and go. Now, one thing I do like, look, hood struts. As you can tell, I just washed the thing too, so water dripping everywhere. But this is your next generation uh, five liter Coyote and dual throttle bodies under this thing. They've got so much engine shoved under this car. And can you imagine a GT500 version of this where they would actually put a supercharger on top of that? I'm interested in that car, definitely, because I love the previous uh, GT500 version of this thing. But as you can see, it's pretty clean. It's Ford. I like how they, for, for racing part of the uh, performance edition, you get the, uh, the, the bars connecting this, so you get more stability with the front end. You're getting a uh, 3.5 rear end in this thing. Now, this is an automatic transmission. Don't kill me. Don't kill me about the automatics, because Kelly will burn up a clutch. She can drive a manual transmission, but she's just liable to tear up a clutch. So we got the automatic and the automatic, trust me, is faster. And this thing will get up and go. And you have a lot of modes that make this thing purr. So let me show you those modes real quick and uh, we'll go from there. All right, part of the fun of this thing is getting in it. And well, it is, it is a, you know, it's a pony car, it's a sports car. But it's actually relatively easy to get into, which is a nice thing, especially I, I'm near 50. I'm not a kid. I'm not probably, you're probably not watching me for my age, but uh, the harder, it gets harder. The Super is hard to get into. The Z is especially hard to get into, even though once you're in it, they're fun cars. I do find this one, it sits up just a little bit higher and I do find this to be uh, more of a fun car. And as you can see here, you're getting lots of cool touches and we'll go through these touches. You're getting all the, like the little fake kind of carbon fiber weave look, a lot of cool soft touches, a lot of leather to be like that. But I wanna show you what it's like to start this thing up and let you uh, see the panels. All right, so let's push the start. And this is the screen that you will see. Now don't mind the camera in the background there, but this is the sport mode uh, screen right here. And by far, this is my favorite screen. Now you can go through a bunch of them and as you can see here, you can see the, the old monitor, all the Apple CarPlay, everything pops up really quickly. Let's see here, there's the home button. So we'll hit the home button right there and you can see audio is off, shows my uh, Apple CarPlay, which I will say like that. This system is much better than the uh, sync version in the Bronco. I will say, I think this is sync point 4.1 if I remember right but all your gauges in here are in the dash which are in the screen here which is uh, been kind of a pain that's one thing that I would like to change from this but so you have your pony here and that, that's where you get all you know the, all the track displays there you have your uh, this is the button you want to push if you want to run over people when you're coming out of cars and coffee you do have your hazards this is uh, this will quiet the exhaust down when you're driving so it's like a quick button for it 
And of course you have your rear defrosters there. Now we got a volume, actual physical volume button, which I'm very happy about. You push it, the radio comes on, everything's really quick. I'm telling you. So you have your wireless charging here, USB, A and C there. You do have an AUX port in case you want to probably, you know, radar tank or whatever you want to run this thing. Now this is the automatic transmission, but I'm telling you, this car is a lot of fun because you have paddle shifters. Now I feel like I took heat in this a while back that I feel like they were a button up here, that it was just like half of this paddle shifter. But as you can see, you do actually have a full paddle in this. And, and I believe that was, maybe it was the prototype that I got to mess around with the auto show. I can't remember, but I don't recall feeling a full paddle back here. So that was happy about that. Uh, as far as your, your controls up here, you do have your cruise control, start, stop, set, and all that. This is your lane departure. So if you're, uh, you know, you're wandering around, you hit that and, um, you know, it keeps you, you know, it, it buzzes the steering wheel, lets you know. You can answer your phone calls here. You do have a steering wheel adjustment. So if you punch that, you have a couple options for how you want to do your steering so you can put it in sport mode that way which is very nice and i haven't even got into all the ways you can program this but you have your volume here that you got for if you're uh, hooked up to your radio you can switch it or radio stations like that and it's pretty easy now modes this is pretty cool that it's at a thumbprint because let's just pan back here just a little bit so we'll push down and you can quickly on the fly go into whatever mode you want so when it hits sport mode and it goes right in changes all the exhaust and everything as you can see there it does the screen that way we'll go into the next one which is track mode as you can see there the little car it's on the racetrack and definitely you can see there look it takes off the um, all your stabilization so you are definitely ready for uh for track mode and if you look it changes the percentage over here of your fuel so now you have a better idea if you're out on the track you don't necessarily have to watch this little dial. You can actually see the percentage of it in here. And one neat thing too is it puts what mode you are in right here. So if you're worried about where am I at when you're driving, you can see the exhaust is in track mode, which makes it very, very loud. As you can see there, it shows the little helmet to be in track mode. Your steering, once again, it shows that it is in sport mode. So we'll click it once again. And we will go to drag strip, strip mode. And let's see what happens there. Now, once again, you can see you can see the little lights of that, so you definitely know the steering's back in sport, your active exhaust is on. Once again, it shows the percentage of everything, and you can it looks like you can go through your, your gauges here, all that. Uh, fuel economy, you can show that, which who cares what it's in, in that mode, because once again, we wanna we want the screen to uh, to show represent what we want. And it says track use only. Now I have drove this thing in this mode, I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, and it's a lot of fun. And finally, there is slippery mode. Now we did get in, you'll see some video pop up here. We were in the rain and I did use this mode and you could definitely ch tell that the throttle response was different. You couldn't, uh, you, it wasn't as easy. You had to push harder to get into the accelerator because it doesn't want you, there's a lot of power with this vehicle. So it you know, it doesn't, it wants you to be safe out on the highway. So it definitely tampers with the throttle control and the steering did feel a little bit heavier too. So I don't know if that's, uh, that's part of it or it was just in my head how that worked. But I want to take this thing out. I want to drive it a little bit and um, we literally just got back into town to do this review. So uh, let's finish up the interior and I'm gonna take it for a drive. Now one of the big pluses is, this was uh, done by RTR, the uh, the brake. Now this is just an e-brake, so it's not a mechanical brake like it used to be by wire, but you can pull it up and yes, it operates like a parking brake. But I believe if you push it down, I'll have to go through it and we'll play with this a little bit. And you can go into drift mode where you can uh, lock the rear tires up and slide it around and have some fun. Now, it is an automatic, yes, but it does look good. I'm going to say everything about this thing looks good. And all the interior, if you look, all the like, I mean, this is kind of fake weaving. It's plastic, obviously, but there's a lot of cool details with it. A lot of cool, like a little bit of, a little bit of platinum look to it, a little bit of a chrome look to it. And the screen, once again, the screen does not bother me at all. I do like the kind of like the little chrome um, the, the horse there and we get into this and I mentioned this when we saw this at Chicago Auto Show definitely has that nice throwback logo look that it says Mustang there and overall you know the car the car is just it's it's a classic but it's also kind of a little bit futuristic now if you're a Ford lover you will recognize some of these buttons definitely some of the stuff just doesn't change from and why should it it, it all works like even the uh, switch is basically the same switch that I have in the old Bronco over there so but that doesn't bother me now we're getting uh, a lot of speakers in this. I believe that is a sub up there. Don't hold me to that. No, I'll 
remember, this is my first time really getting to talk about the car. So we will go into details more that I get to play with this, but you can have quite a few speakers in this thing. The mirror, I do love that it's really, it's like a rimless, there's no frame to this mirror, which is very nice. You do get sunglasses holders. So if uh, you're Tom Cruise, you want to throw on your top gun glasses, get your lights, all that, which are nice LED. Now, one bummer about this is the mirror. And I'm gonna pull this up here as you can see. What is wrong with that? These old candescent, these awful yellow bulbs. I don't understand why they still put the, the old style bulbs in these, or maybe they're just tinted. Uh, they look, it's hard to tell. I can't tell if those are, are LEDs or not, but I just wish this was white to match this. It just is, is a little off to me and it kind of feels cheap that way, but overall, I'm not gonna complain about it because I'm never gonna use that. Now we do have the, uh, for the garage, you got three buttons there for that. Uh, I'll probably never use that. Sadly, this car, we'll never get in my garage but that is what it is right we will buy a car cover for this thing because uh, i got a tree back there that loves to drip sap all over everything i do not want any sap into this thing now let's get into the interior i want to show you uh let me get out of this car i'll walk around and show you the interior a lot of plastics this thing uh wait soft touch here soft touch here a little bit looks like leather uh, nice soft touch here. I do like kind of the, the hard handle there. That's pretty nice. It says Mustang here. When you open the door, it does put a little Mustang logo out there. I'm not interested in that. But we did get electric powered seats in this, which I do love. Now, these are not the Recaro seats. These are just the normal leather seats. And I have to say, I like these quite a bit. You still get a nice lot of side bolstering in this thing. So if you're out on the track, you're not going to slide around. You do get lumbar support in this. And the stitching and everything about this thing is very nice. Now, we didn't opt for any of the uh, the red stitching. We could have done that, but I just kind of felt like I've got enough red out here on the car. I wanted the interior to kind of be one solid color if I could. Now, obviously there's white stitching, but I didn't want to bring any more red into this car. Now, back seats. Well, that's kind of a joke, which has always been with a Mustang because, well, I'm not getting back there. I can tell you that, but it is, you kind of got that, that throwback bucket seats to that thing and they do fold down you do have mounts for car seats if you were to dare put a car seat back there because, well, I, had, I used to have a G35 similar to this and it was a nightmare to put my daughter in back there. So I do not recommend it, but I understand if this is your only car, you have a small child, it will work for you. Now let's look in the trunk. All right, so you have a button down here. You can see it right there. You can see your button right there so you can open it up or you do have it on your fob itself. You do have the little two button there. So if your hands are full, it might be easier to do it that way. But as far as cargo room, uh, you actually have enough. You could get, if you wanted to put golf clubs back here, you do have enough room back there. And I think for daily use, if you had groceries, whatever you need to throw back there, you do have uh, quite a bit of room, which is uh, better than some of the other brands. And those seats do fold back. So if you do need to, you know, we were at Ikea the other day and well, we may have bought something that we needed a little bit of extra room. Anyways, but as far as that, you do get the tow hook. There's the, the booklet and all that. But you don't get with the performance is this no spare tire you do get the little pump and all that but part of the performance package is you know these these sporty meaty tires these um pirelli p0s so they're 19 inch of course the fronts are different than the back so the backs are gonna be a little bit wider so there was no reason to put a donut in this thing because if you're tracking this having a lot of fun yeah i'm not changing the tire a lot's been made about the rear of this car. I like I like the like three-dimensional deal they've done there, the way they've inverted that in. I think that looks really cool. And it, it's, you know, I know a lot of people said, well, you know, it's not like a next generation car. It's more like a, uh, just an update, which I disagree. You can put the, uh, the old uh, S550 next to this and yes, it's the similar length and all that, but there's quite a bit of difference to this thing. Now, I'm not gonna lie. The underpinning of this is pretty identical and Ford said that, they've not hid from that, which happens all the time. Hey, Fox body guys, how long was the Fox body made? So I don't wanna hear people complaining like, oh, it's not, it's not a next true generation car. Uh, this thing is badass how it sits and I guarantee you it's faster than the, the previous version of the GTs. So um, maybe we should find somebody to race. Hmm. Anyway, so we got, so being uh, the active exhaust, we do get true dual tips of this thing. Nice little uh, brake light down here. All, all in all, we got a brake light up here. It just looks racy and uh, I do want to race this thing. I do want to get this thing on the track and have a little bit of fun with it. The side of this car, I know a lot of people complain, oh, it looks too much like the Camaro. I like these square hips and I don't complain about on the Camaro. So that's about the only similarities you can see. Now, obviously they're pony cars, so they're gonna be similar sized cars, but past that, 
leave it leave the camaro crap alone because this thing looks a lot better in my opinion than the camaro does and um i'm very happy with this thing now the wheels on this being a performance edition the the night pony edition that we got which means black roof mirror caps blacked out wheels blacked out badging over there but these wheels kelly really likes these wheels i'm kind of hit or miss i just washed this car and let me tell you those things are a pain in the ass to clean all the little spokes of this thing um just just kind of a pain in the, in the butt and it had it be a lot of brake dust if you're tracking this and you're trying to use those wheels i say get you a track set of wheels something that uh of course you're going to want a lighter wheel anyways but i say go get it something and just leave these for uh kind of street use but they do not look bad with the car i'm not going to say they do but uh that night pony edition i love the blacked out the headlights of that thing i saw this thing in a picture ali our salesperson with uh brighton ford sent us a picture of this thing and i thought did they put some sort of uh, a tint over the the glass itself and no it's just because they blacked out there's no chrome in that and it just for certain times of day it just looks like completely blacked out which looks really cool with the night pony you're getting a little bit of extra dark around here and of course you got your your uh, skirt down here but overall this car is is pretty freaking nice i'm not gonna lie now fifty seven thousand dollars i think it was fifty seven thousand fifteen dollars if i remember right for the rapid red the red is a little bit more it was on that one i know it is on this one and the night pony package of course and performance is uh well worth it in my opinion because price of supra to get anything fun in supra it's going to be expensive go to z z is in the mid 50s for their uh, their performance edition and uh not, not dogging those cars because there's a car for everybody to love i just feel like being a v8 hearing the rumbles of this thing you're just kind of getting what you pay for with it where the other ones you might just feel slightly left down now the other ones you can tune it seems like Z1s, our friend with Z1s in Atlanta, they love to tune Nissan, so I think they've cracked the code on the Nissan already. I haven't heard on Supra whether you can tune it or not. I imagine you can now. It's been out for a few years, but supposedly they've locked this one down. So I've seen some comments already in my videos where they're like, hey, I don't want any part of this thing if I can't kind of tune it in and up the, the ante a little bit, which, yeah, you know, it's okay, I guess, but I kind of like it how it is. It's, it's, I won't say anything's ever fast enough because I always want the most horsepower, but in factory form, this is the best bang for your buck. Now, we've talked about the car, we've, we've hinted about the car, but it's time for that, that silly drone shot. So let's do that in three, two, one. This thing, I, like I said earlier, I've drove the, the Supra. I really, the Supra, I really wanted a Supra really badly. I've drove the Z. I was slightly disappointed in the Z for what it cost. Some of the, the interior, not how the car performs, just the interior of it was just felt a little cheap versus this. I'm gonna right now, I'm gonna say this. This is out of the three, this is the number one out of all of them. Now you might, there might be other vehicles out there that you kind of put in the same category as this car. Uh, let me know in the comments. I would be curious what you think. But overall, I think between the three right now, this is the home run. Now, will this thing be a pain in the butt overall years to come? It's hard to say right now. These things are so new. It is a uh, updated Coyote engine in this thing. So I'm sure there's a little bit of things that will be worked out. Like I said earlier, we had a little uh, a TPMS sensor that was uh, acting kind of wonky said we had zero pressure come to find out it was because it didn't like something plugged in uh, and it's in the manual it talks about hey you know some things uh monkey with the uh the system of it which is kind of strange and before get your act together on that but this car is a, it's fun to drive all the modes they don't feel cheap they actually feel the modes of this car feel like they're doing something and i've been in other brands where you just feel like it feels gimmicky like it doesn't really you can feel the steering change a little bit slightly tamper with the uh the throttle but past that you don't feel like it's doing anything this car here i must say feels like you know it's ready to perform when you put it in track mode so so in the comments below let me know what you think about this thing i'm excited to uh show you how does this thing actually live how what's it like to live with this car and once again we're not one of those channels that are just doing this for clicks i'm doing this to educate you guys if there's something leave me a comment there's something you want to know about you haven't heard somewhere else i'll be happy to show you this thing now it's a v8 it's a GPT performance, and um, what's it going to be like on fuel? Because I know we did get 24 miles per gallon coming from Michigan, which that's all highway, and that was about 77 to 80 miles an hour, which I thought was very incredible because I think it's rated for 20 highway. But what is it going to be like for daily use of this thing? Just stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Will it be good? 
I don't know. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this thing. So whether we two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or this badass Mustang, I get to drive all because of you guys? This is your All-Terrain Nation. I'm your host, David Boyd, and we are out. Peace, everybody. Love y'all. Oh, I'm in the park. I gotta, I gotta put it in active exhaust. I just got to. <laughs> Peace.